know, we talk so much about companies retrenching, saving capital. It's kind of nice to see some innovation and new products. Tell us about it. Yeah, so um, uh, uh, at Box, we work with 95,000 companies globally that use our platform to be able to securely share and collaborate on their data, both in and outside of their organization. So um, there's a tremendous amount of, of content, whether it's banks or life sciences companies, uh, the federal agencies that need to be able to share with their customers, their partners, um, and their supply chain. And so we're advancing the way that companies can handle the security around that data um, by bringing more intelligence to data security. So if there's anomalies in how content is being accessed or what locations it's being accessed from, um, or what devices people are, are accessing their files from, we can alert the security teams of those organizations to be able to identify possible threats um, in, uh, in how that work is being done. So Box Shield is our new, uh, brand new product for that. So when you say intelligence, artificial intelligence? Yeah, machine learning that basically maps the regular behavior of that organization or that user and then can alert the security team when there are aberrations in that, uh, in that usage pattern. So um, it's a, a breakthrough product for us and it dramatically enhances the security story for our customers. Would this be a, a premium onto what they're already buying and how much more can you charge? Yeah, so it is an advanced uh, solution. So um, we are selling it as an add-on product. However, we just launched uh, an all new suite of our product. So um, the ability to bring together workflow, our platform and this advanced security solution as well as data governance all in one, uh, uh, in one solution. Just to shift gears a little bit here, we've, we've had some analysts on our air recently who have made the suggestion that with all the gangbusters growth we've seen in cloud and cloud spending adoption overall, that maybe potentially we're starting to hit a peak here. How do you think about it? Um, I think that, um, you know, I think in some of the latest earnings, obviously, there, there you know, can be mixed messages around that. Um, when we sort of zoom back and think at, you know, 10,000 foot view, um, I think we're still in the very early stages of the cloud. Uh, if you think about the amount of businesses globally that are still going through digital transformation, the amount of employees that still are going to need to be able to work in a much more modern way, the amount of um, customer experiences that are still left to be transformed in every industry, from the signals we're seeing from our customer base, we're still in the early innings of cloud transformation. So I think we have years of growth uh, ahead. Um, I don't know the, the particular growth rate that we'll see. Uh, that will obviously always you know, sort of be uh, dependent on the size of companies and the size of the market. Um, but there's still years and years of transformation left within the enterprise. We've known you for so long, uh, well before <laughs> public well before the great well hair. Well before, yes. <laughs> hair is great. And Box had a ticker symbol. We had a discussion yesterday about what's happening to early funding rounds yeah. year on year. Yeah. What, why is it, what's, what's going on and does it reflect nervousness in the Valley or not? Uh, well, I, I, well I actually, I'm, I'm sort of seeing the opposite. I think that the funding rounds are getting bigger. Um, I think the uh, earlier stage companies are uh, ending up with larger valuations. I think what we've actually seen from the public market is that there's a tremendous amount of excitement when you look at recent IPOs of Zoom or Slack or others. Um, it was actually showing that the companies were actually misvalued as private companies where um, they probably could have even had higher valuations as a private organization. So if they didn't wait too long, if they didn't wait too long. And so I think that, that you're still seeing that, you know, companies are trying to find that right balance of when to go public. Um, but uh, but frankly, I think when you look at the amount of innovation that's still coming out of both Silicon Valley and then just, you know, the tech industry globally, um, we are we're still selling, uh, seeing a, a tremendous amount of upside. And I think that's being represented by the valuations that are, are actually growing um, at the earlier stages right now. What is your sense? We've been talking about this really from a macro level lately, but just business, CEO sentiment, consumer confidence, the fact that there are all these macro uncertainties out there and how it's affecting business spending right now. Have you seen any impact? Um, I think in terms of direct business spending, particularly uh, in IT and, and kind of technology spend, we're not seeing much of an impact from a macro standpoint. Yeah. I think the general volatility of the market you know, trade wars, tariffs, all that is, is, I think, never a good thing for business. I think you want to be able to sort of rely on what are our global partners going to look like. We want our customer base uh, to be able to be able to do trade globally in a very efficient way. That means that they're going to adopt modern technology to do that trade. So, you know, we would prefer to have a lot less volatility and noise in the market. However, I, we're not seeing that directly impact IT spending in any particular way yet. Do, do companies in the Valley want to sell in China anymore? Um, I think that uh, the, the amazing thing about being a, a software company or an internet company generally is that your, your reach uh, is and, and, and really should be global. Um, the ability to impact every consumer or business 
around the world is the, the, the real opportunity and vision for most startups and software companies. So the ability to do business in China, the ability to do business kind of, you know, all, all across the world, I think, is an important aspect of being a software company. So there's no sense yet that we're going to enter some kind of digital Cold War and we need to start picking sides. Um, I think it would be a disaster if, if, we, if we end up in that direction. And I think we should be doing everything possible from a security, a global, um, a, a geopolitical standpoint to avoid that. I, I think these platforms are, are global by nature. I think we don't want to create a, a balkanized Internet where you're doing business on a kind of per country basis. Uh, in a very different type of way. Um, I think it's, uh, it would be way better if we can have you know, global policy around cybersecurity, around trade, around data privacy. And these are all massive topics of, uh, of kind of great importance right now. A lot of attention has been paid to this dinner last week between President Trump and Apple CEO Tim <laughs> Cook. And certainly the president coming out saying he's going to figure something out about Apple regarding the tariffs and calling Apple a great American company. What do you think the response to this has been in, in the Valley? And I guess, do you think that this is a, templ a template, a, a management template that more companies might adopt? Um, I, I think in general, uh, it would be great to not have trade issues that are driven by very particular one-off you know, conversations um, or, or organizations issues. I think we should have a a global trade policy that um, that makes sense, you know, on behalf of the broader economy. So I think, um, uh, you know, I think it's fantastic if Apple's been able to make some headway in, in terms of, you know, educating the administration around what uh, what these issues need to look like and, and how we need to resolve them. Um, but in general, I think that that. Uh, you know, what we would be looking for at Box selling to our customers, and I think what the tech industry generally is looking for is more stability um, and more long-term thinking around uh, these approaches. And, um, and, you know, hopefully, you know, Tim was able to make that case, and um, hopefully we'll see some positive progress on that dimension. And, and I would just want to, you know, wh while we're talking about this topic, I think the other issue is um, that's really important around this is immigration and all the noise around immigration policy. Um, that's not helping uh, America's ability to be innovative um, and be able to, uh, you know, bring on the best talent. So I think trade, immigration, um, uh, you know, cybersecurity, privacy, all of these topics are incredibly important for um, the health of the digital economy, and we do have to kind of work through them. Right. Uh, Chris Sacca had an amazing thread a few a couple weeks ago about the companies he's worked for and how much they've been driven by the hard work of legal immigrants, right, people who were born in other countries. But who's carrying the water on that front for the industry in Washington, right? Uh -huh. do, you, do you guys think you need to speak out more forcefully? Um, I think um, I think there's a, a lot of conversations uh, around this topic. Unfortunately, they probably don't raise to the same level as some of the, the other areas that that are generating a lot more noise right now. Um, you know, hopefully in a more maybe stable political uh, environment, we'd be able to have uh, you know much healthier conversations around talent and education and what's the future of STEM look like and how do we make sure that, that America is competitive for the next generation of talent. Um, these are the issues that I think every, you know, uh, technology company is going to be dealing with for decades to come. And if you had to rank the conversations that you're having with your, your peers, do they center around immigration, trade, or antitrust? <laughs> What's number one? Uh, probably at dinner, it's antitrust. Really? Um, well, it's, it's the most uh, dramatic and, and interesting of the, of the topics. Um, but I think that that uh, sort of this idea of how do you regulate big tech, how do we think about um, whether it's, you know, breaking up properties or just ensuring better cybersecurity and better data privacy practices from a regulatory standpoint. These are, these are absolutely very active topics right now in the Valley. Does big tech need to be regulated or reined in in some form or fashion? I think all tech needs to be uh, regulated in some fashion. I think this idea of big tech versus small tech is, is maybe a little bit of, um, uh, of a red herring. I think that, that we need to be able to have, um, a, you know, uh, practices and standards around data privacy um, and the protection of both consumer and enterprise data. Um, and um, I think this is no more of an issue for big tech as it is uh, any kind of small startup. Um, and, um, and I think these are going to be really, really interesting issues that, that need to be resolved in the next few years or else both consumers and businesses aren't going to be able to place their trust in these platforms. Um, so, uh, so I think when you, you know, look at what Apple is talking about around encryption, what you think about Salesforce or Amazon or Microsoft on data security, um, what we're focused on with Box Shield and other security products, you know, hopefully this is a, a little bit of a, uh, a view into where the direction of the industry can go, where customers can control their data, you know what's happening to your information, you have the ability to rev revoke access uh, to that data. Um, these are going to be, I think, important principles and rights uh, of any user on, on these Internet platforms yeah. in the future.